Okay, let's get started. Alright, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to the stream and the channel and today's, you know, whatever. Uh, my name is Eric. I am a cinematographer, director, photographer, editor, fight choreographer, and writer. And uh, today we are going to be doing something we haven't done in a while. We're going to be in Premiere Pro uh, working on some video editing, uh, some pre-editing, a little bit of working on a project that um, I've feature film that I've been working on for a while. So we're going to be going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about some of the the decisions I make early in the editing process, and just kind of highlighting uh, that even at the very beginning, there's still story choices you can make, and still, you know, diving into that that element of uh, of post production. Because, and again, the reason I do this. Uh, hey, Stephanie. Hey, Shelby Lynn. Um, the the reason I do this, and the reason I will continue to do this, is because editing is such a huge huge important part of excuse me um of the creative process especially nowadays anything camera related you were going to have or you have the opportunity for some really extensive post-production choices and so i like to do this to bring attention to that um and to to do it for free and to do it openly and uh yeah so on and so forth so that's what we're going to be doing um i think what's probably going to happen is we're going to sort all the footage uh we're going to talk about ooh, bumping stuff we're going to sort footage, we're going to talk about why I'm choosing certain things, we're going to look at certain shots, and then uh, what what I'm probably going to do, depending on time, if everything works out, all right, um, is I'm going to end this stream and then start another one immediately after where we go into Lightroom and we do some photo editing. So maybe do a little bit of a balance today, middle of the week, kind of want to do both. So we'll see, we'll see how long this takes. Um, yeah, so that having been said... Uh, Comments, questions are always invited. Uh, thoughts are always welcome. Um, and if you are a creator, if you cr spend your time creating art uh, in any capacity, please, by all means, drop your link to your stuff in the comments, in the uh, in the chat if you're watching live. Uh, I want to make this as much my platform as yours as it can be uh, to kind of include everyone in this. Um, and... Uh, finally, the other thing to uh, other two things to say is if you want to support me and the work that I do, um, you are welcome to go to erichackler.com. If you're interested in my film work, that's all there. If you're interested in my photography, erichackler.com slash photography, and you will find links to my page and my Etsy store, and you can purchase stuff. Um, so either, yeah, purchasing my prints and my photography work or uh, reaching out to collaborate and work together on a, on a film project. Those are the best ways to support me and to let me keep doing this. Um, also, I think it like, uh, you know, I'm a, this is a very small channel, not a whole lot, uh, of, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's the audience I have, but I want to say just so it's out there, obviously this channel and I, and everyone I work with supports the WGA and the writers in their strike against the, uh, against the studios. It is absurd that writers, uh, that anyone in the industry are not paid a living wage writers, especially, um, given their, yeah, you know, absolute like the the essential storytelling they bring to bring to these projects, and the idea that the producers are, are who are making billions on this is try, are trying to uh, take away the writers' secu you know job security and uh, things they've relied on for decades to make a, an honest living, uh, and treating it as oh these people get to live their dream that what do they have to complain about is that 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 stance is complete bullshit. So yes, stand with the writers and support them for as long as it takes for the studios to realize that without writers, you don't have anything without, without writers, every other, every, uh, every other writer, every other person in the film industry is unemployed. So yeah, that having been said, uh, I'm sure that might come up as a recurring theme over the course of the, into the course of this strike. But in the meantime, premiere. So here we are back in Adobe premiere pro. Uh, and I say this every time, um, but it is certainly true. Uh, yeah, certainly true again here, um, that the, uh, that whatever you're editing in, it's a lot of the same process. So don't worry about, you know, editing specific, you know, if you're not editing in Premiere, if you're editing in, you know, in iMovie or in, uh, DaVinci Resolve or any of those. Yeah. 
Um, and yes, AI writing is not a substitute for actual writers. That is a, that's a, AI is a, A, doesn't work the way we think it does, and B, is a ridiculous mess. Um, yeah, I actually really got to turn the desktop audio on. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, AI is a, is a ridiculous, like, it's a mess. It has, it has a lot more human labor attached to it than people realize. Um, and the people who are doing that human labor are not being paid well. They're not being paid at all for it. So, and yeah, it doesn't. It is nowhere near the point of being able to create something that is that will uh, be something on par with the, on par with the writer with a with a human writer. So yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> they keep that's the thing they keep trying to push, and the and the writer. That's one of the things the writers are striking for is a guarantee that that AI will not be uh, will be you know used you know under regulation and controlled. Okay. Uh, and we will keep talking about that as we go, but right now, um, so this is, uh, this is Last Wave. This is our, uh, the curse of the Nicolas Cage surfboard. We're back into editing that project. Uh, Shelby Lynn, I intentionally chose scenes that, uh, you are, okay, yeah, this can go, cool, reset. Um, that will not give away much, so you still won't know what this movie's about, and that is, that makes me happy. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna start, basically, I've got three little scenes here, um, that I just imported, got all the got all the raw footage in, got the audio over here, and we're gonna talk. We're just gonna go through the process of sorting this because this is a it's a part of part of editing that is an essential part, but also often overlooked. Uh, and this is a bit of a detective thing. It's got a little you got to puzzle through some of this stuff sometimes. So yeah, that worked out pretty well. Um, so we're gonna talk about the process. We're gonna talk about the it's the other things that like a lot of times editing is. I've talked about this in the past. Editing can be very, very, very tedious, uh, and so this is like this is a part of that. But is like this is this is going to be this is more of a te- more of the tedious process. I enjoy it honestly. I think it's kind of it's kind of relaxing and zen to just be able to sort of zone out and work on this kind of thing. And I'll talk about what I'm doing in a sec. Um, but. Yeah, it's a nice process, and it's it's an essential thing to do. So just, and that's kind of one of the reasons I like doing this kind of thing for this channel, is to try to take take some of that gloss uh, off of the industry. Because at the at the end of the day, uh, the thing that makes anything like this come together is a lot of hard work, and I want to show make sure to showcase that in as interesting a way as possible. Um, so hopefully I'm making this interesting for you guys, and I'll start talking about it, and you guys are certainly, ha- by having you guys here, it's making this interesting for me, and I'm happy about that. So, um, so what, what I'm doing right now is j- I'm syncing the audio to the video. Um, if you are, if you're not recording stuff directly to your phone, if you're working in, in the industry, um, you are almost certainly recording your audio uh, separate from your video. So... In this case, we have a uh, this is yeah we've got um, me operating camera uh, as the cinematographer, and then the uh, incomparable Eric Brown uh, on sound. And so we are putting so I'm putting that together right now. That's track one. That's track two. Um, and so you'll notice for each of these each of these video clips, and I'm just bringing it, I'm bringing each one of them in. I'm putting them each on their own separate line. Um, uh, and you'll notice for each of these, I have two separate. I've got two separate tracks of audio that I'm bringing in. Uh, oh, that's so close. Yeah, Eric Brown and I tend. Uh, uh, Eric Brown and I tend to be very, very close a lot of the time on and when we hit when we hit start recording. Sometimes they line up really well. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm. I've been kind of missing doing the video editing. On stream, I might get back into that. Video editing is a little bit. It's it sounds like like I want to do the photography because you get really you do get to see start to end and get to see the whole process. And video editing, like you know, you know, there's been a couple projects where you've seen me do kind of start to end, but usually it's been a much longer. It's it's over the course of multiple streams. It's never just one thing. And this isn't gonna be one. This isn't gonna be a one thing, time thing either. This is just, I'm just sorting footage. Um, but here's what I'm doing. So. We've got, so for each clip, I've got two tracks of audio, and I can tell this because if I look up here, uh, it says, you know, Zoom, which is the the name of the recorder, it, that's what it names the files, 0078-TR or underscore TR1. 
And over here is 0078 underscore TR2. And if we had more tracks, it'd be TR3 and TR4. Also, I can look at the time, the length of each clip, and see they're exactly the same, which more than likely, because we're counting down to milliseconds there, more than likely means they're they're the same clip. And what that what that is, um, is and eventually one of these is gonna say it can't find it, and I'm gonna have to do it by hand, and that'll be interesting too, because uh, then I can talk about why we why the why we use you know clapboards on uh, on movies. Um, but yeah, look at that. We are like f five or six frames off of each other. That's incredible. Um, little little not quite as much down here. Um, but. Yeah, so the reason these we have two tracks, in this case, two tracks of audio from just from Eric Brown, the two green tracks, um, is because he's got two microphones plugged into the recorder. Uh, he's got two microphones plugged in. One is the is the boom mic, it's on the big pole. Um, you ever see yeah, and then he's got one that is a what's called a lav mic, which is short for lavalier, uh, which is actually on our actor. Um, and uh, if you ever, if you, yeah, if you ever, if you watch, you know, any kind of like interview show or any sports broadcasting or anything, look at the commentators. Uh, they're all gonna have some kind of a lav mic uh, on there. Jeez, okay, let's. Wow. Okay, yeah, we were spot on with that one. This one, this is. Yeah, half a second off between me hitting start, hit me hitting record, and him hitting record. That is wildly hard to do. Uh, he and I are just very in sync on these shoots. Um, so yeah, so I've got two tracks of audio uh, from him, and then, and then the blue track there is camera sound. Um, that's what the computer is using to to sync. Uh, so yeah, so he, so yeah, he's got one track that, and you'll notice, you know, on some of these, like there's some that are like, you know, it's it's the same. If you look at the waveforms, like if you look at this, look at the waveform on this one here, like the overall shape is the same. I can actually make this bigger. Uh, yeah, so the overall shape is the same. But one is a little more, you know, they're like slightly different. And that's just because the two mics are in different spots and pick up audio a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, so that's, so we've got two tracks of audio. And, and when he goes into edit and he goes in to do the final mix, I send him a file. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, Shovelin, that's amazing. Yeah, wearing, see, yeah, everyone's got the lav mics. And if you don't have a shirt on, you got to put them somewhere. Um, and they're getting they're getting good about wireless labs, where you don't have to, you don't have to have the whole battery pack. You can just have the little mic clipped on, which is pretty cool. Um, and they make them for phones. If you're interested in this kind of thing, they make if you're if you're you know recording stuff on your phones and you want to improve your audio, um, they make uh, Bluetooth labs that you can like you know connect a thing to your phone. It you know or connect a thing. Some they've got some of the, you know there's a receiver and a transmitter. Some are just the ju just the receiver, and you can connect. You can you know you can have the mic, turn the mic on, connect it via Bluetooth, and then just clip the mic onto your shirt, and and you're good. So, um, anyway, when I send him, this is I'm gonna talk about why I'm doing like part of the reason I'm doing this the way I am. Um, so I'm gonna, so once we have a scene put together, like this is the start. This is me just working on the raw footage. Um, once we have a scene put together, and I have a rough cut of a scene, or a scene, probably not a rough cut, we usually get closer to a final cut of each scene before I send it, send him a version that he can work with. But when we have a scene put together, I will send him the, uh, I'll send him a, a, you know, a file that looks a lot like this that he can actually access all the different tracks, and he will be able to adjust and be like, okay, let's take out, you know, the boom. Maybe there's wind sound on the on the boom audio, so we're gonna take that out, or maybe the, you know, the the. You know, maybe somebody moved in the lab, brushed their clothing a little bit, and so we're going to take that out, and we're, he's going to adjust the levels. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just I'm giving I I am putting this together a so I can edit it easily, and I can keep track of where everything is, um, and b so that and I can be it means I can edit with the best sound, um, uh, and then also I'm I'm giving him all as many possible options as he needs, in order to. Uh, in order to edit his sound the way he needs to and to give him all the, you know, everything he needs to work with. So that's why I'm doing That's why I do this this way. And it's one of those things where you do a lot of basic kind of busy work at the beginning, at the front end of the edit, so that by the time you get to the end um, and you get to the later stages, you're not looking for the audio. You're not looking for, didn't we have another track of that? It all, you've got everything is right where it needs to be. Um, and in Hollywood, if you're doing, uh, if you're working professional, Professional audio. Okay, so we are. All right, yeah, this is still track one and two, but this is longer. I'm wondering if this is gonna sync up here, or sync up to something else. Um, 
I'm about to listen to it and see what it actually is. Give me a sec. Oh no, that sunk up pretty well. Okay, he was he had the mic running a little bit ahead of time. That's fine. I'm gonna not gonna delete that yet. That might end up being important. Um, sometimes he lets the mic run to kind of pick up some room tone or just to to pl practice with it. Sometimes we try to mix some takes up. So let's see. let's take these and put them over here. Let's go ahead and link those up. Um, but yeah, if you look at the credits of most major movies. Um, like early, you know, in, in the uh, in the credits before it gets to the scroll, when you're putting everyone's names up there, you know, one at a time, you will get, um, let's say, yeah, when you're doing that, uh, you will see an editor. You'll see an editor's name. Oop, don't want to shorten the clip yet. Um, and that person is is the person responsible for making a lot of the editing choices. But if you watch the credits all the way through, you will find stuff for assistant editors and post production team and so on and so forth. And those people, there's you know, assistant, yeah, yeah, um. Those people are off in there. We go. Didn't find it. Didn't find a match. We're gonna look at some of this. Now we're gonna have to start do, playing detective a little bit. Um, and those people are the ones who do this. Those people are the ones who sort through. They sync everything up. They get everything together so that the editor doesn't. Editor doesn't. Main editor doesn't have to. Um. So it's a cheer wine day, by the way. Um. So yeah, that's what. Like, this is the job that assistant editors do, um, but it's still very, very important and very vital. And if you are, uh, if you're an editor or getting into editing, it's a thing you need to know exists. Let me watch this clip and see if we did sound on it. Okay. Okay, so this shot, I didn't hear us roll sound. Okay, let me see what this let me see what this audio is. This might just be wind tone. Sounds like just wind. Let me listen to this one. This is the other one. Let me see if that actually syncs up with anything. And if not, it might just be he's getting room down. Let me see if that syncs with this one because it just might. Uh... Nope. Okay. So. So what this is, let me, I'll explain what this is. Actually, let me, let me listen to these real quick to see if make sure there's not anything here I need to worry about. Okay, that's just, that's just, just us messing with the mics. Okay, cool. So here's what we got. Um, this is, I'm going to change the name here to Wind Tone. Uh, I'm going to change the name here to Door Foley. Uh, so Wind Tone, uh, like, yeah, usually it's just like, if, you're, if, anything, anything, if you're doing tone on a shoot, um, it is usually, it means you're doing, like, it's, it's, it's sound, it's atmospheric sound. Um, if you've ever been on a shoot where they do something called room tone, um, and you, that's the, it's the hard, it's always the hardest sound to get because it means everyone, everyone in the room's got to stay quiet for thirty seconds or so, so that we can just get sound of the empty room. And you know, there's gonna be moments where you're editing. If you're editing dialogue and like you want to cut little bits out, you don't want to just go to empty air you know, or to dead space because you you hear the sound drop in and out. So, in a scenario like that. You have this 30 seconds of room tone. So if you need to cut out a little snippet of dialogue or cut out space between some lines, you can put room tone in underneath it. Um, and so that way, even though no one is talking, you still hear the sound of the room and it keeps it does it keeps the like, you know, you're still hearing the scene. Technically, you don't hear the sound cut out because we're really good at noticing that um, wind tone in this case is the same thing. We're shooting outside. It was an incredibly windy night. So having some having the audio of the wind, it will serve the same purpose. Um, the last scene I edited uh, is a beach scene. If I click over to over here to get out of the water, uh, the last scene I edited was this beach scene, um, and we had let's see, that's the, there we go. Yeah, we had this beach scene, um, and so for the dialogue there, we had uh, we had beach tone. So we've got the sound of the of the of the waves and the wind and everything there that we can we can drop in when we need to. Um, so yeah, and then Foley. Foley is Foley is the word for sound effects. Foley is the word for we recorded sound effects on set, um, or in post. There there are there are Foley artists who record everything in post, and you will get, 
you know, there. If you've ever seen, if you ever seen videos of like people, you know, wa- like with a movie on and they're making the sound effects by like, you know, if someone's like bone breaks and they're breaking celery, or you know, someone gets punched and it's like, you know, throwing a baseball into a glove. That's that's a foley artist. They're doing all the sound effects after the fact. Um, and so sometimes we were, you know, we record sound effects and stuff on set. In this case, trying to because I was talking through the the door slamming here because I was talking through that to, to, to and I was mostly concerned with the visuals um, instead of trying to sync sound up on that one uh, EB just recorded the sound of the door slamming this, uh, that's, that's our director JD talking um, yeah so EB just recorded the sound of the door slamming and he's gonna dub that in in post uh, when he's when he gets a hold of it um, once he sees, you know, what bits I use. So, that's what Foley is. Foley is sound effects. Um, let's see. And these shots are, yeah, this is just just a visual shot. And then, we didn't do sound in any of these because it's just, I don't, think, I don't think we did sound. There's no reason for us to do sound. Um, yeah, I think I think he's doing sound. Like, I can yeah. So you, you're gonna you can hear me talking through this whole thing, um, because yeah, this shot is this shot is entirely atmospheric. I'm just waiting for the trees to start moving because it was a very windy night. There we go, a little bit of wind going in those trees that we can we can do something with. Uh, so those shots have no sound beyond the camera sound because they don't need to be synced up. Um, yeah, so that is that's one scene. That's one scene done for now. Uh, there's one other thing I did to this footage that I'm going to talk about in a sec. But, uh, yeah, a couple shots here, just me getting some B-roll, you know, rack focus from the, from the lamp to the trees, so on and so forth, just to, exp- which, I don't know if I'm going to use it once I get to editing, but, like, our first couple shots are, our boogie here, walking kind of out to the shed, uh, so, yeah, you can hear how loud that wind was. Uh, so yeah, um, and I'm always a fan of, I mean, like, obviously I lit this scene, obviously I had, I had a light set up to, to light it, but whenever it's, um, whenever it's an outdoor, like a scene that shouldn't naturally have light, like the sun, like a a sunlit scene, um, you know, a night, like a nighttime scene that doesn't, that's, you know, I like to try to, try to find a shot of a practical light that I can put in. Um, and we'll see if we end up needing it. That's, those are often shots that get cut and that's fine. It's, you know, it's set up and if you don't need, if it slows the story down, get the hell, get it out of the movie. But, um, I like to have a shot of some kind of practical light, uh, that will, so, so that we, yeah, we see, yeah, we'll see the trees blowing in the wind. We'll see the close up on the, on the branches and then we'll see, you know, we'll see a shot of this. Um, and then when we cut to, to Boogie here, it's like, oh, he, that light is lighting him. And that makes sense. Um, also the fact that the light is on this side of the frame is kind of over here on the left hand side. And then with this shot, just let me back it up a bit. Oh, that's, that's inside the, sh- that's inside, inside the shed. That's the wrong one. Let's go here. So yeah, so this shot, if he, when he turns and looks, the light is on the, uh, the light is on the left side of his face. It also helps to visually kind of in your head connect that this is, this light is, is coming or that yeah that 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 light is what's lighting him. Okay, let's do the next scene. The next scene's gonna be interesting. So this is yes, yeah, so these two are not getting dropped in, but everything else is. Okay, cool. So we're gonna come back to my. I am inc- like anally or about organizing, anal about organizing my fo- my audio, um, and my files on on a shoot like this, especially because this is a feature and there's so many scenes, um, and it's, it'd be easy to make this a complete mess. So, uh. Yeah, so I've got folders on folders on folders. And at some point, I would love to... Excuse me. At some point, if people want me to, uh, I would love to do a stream that's just about file organization in in editing because it is so helpful. Um, there's an editor uh, who, I was, who I was talking to who was saying the, um, the most important thing about... Or like one of, one of the things that is essential for an editor to be able to do is to... Uh, be able to like pull up 
you know, if a director is like, we're, we're, we, had, we had that shot from that other scene. Can you grab that? You know, like, you know, good editors can find that scene, in ten, that exact thing that the director asked for within 10 seconds. And so with me, that's a thing that I try to stick to where I can, you know, you ask me for, you know, we're like, you know, where's that, sh- you know, where's that, you know, that weird shot we did of the, of the, like, you know, surfboard driving the truck. And I can be, and I can very quickly be like, okay, here we go. Let me, let's, uh, let's go to our sequences. Let's go to, uh, oh, these are not sorted correctly. Damn it. Um, oh, there we go. Here we go to the car scene and we can jump back to here and boom, there's the shot of the surfboard behind the, behind the wheel. Um, and so that is, that's something that like you want to be, uh, like you want to be able to do as quickly as possible, and so that's why I'm really I, I try to be as organized as possible. Also, means I like to clear a lot of this out when I can. Um, this is that's okay. That's the audio bin that I don't that I just worked with. Uh, that's what I'm going to be working with. This is what the one I am working with. So there we go. Okay, so new scene. Uh, this is the, the this is the fireside chat scene. Um, so the first thing that I do with this footage is we are shooting this like this movie is being. Yeah, we're shooting this movie HD, or that we're fi- we're releasing this movie HD. This movie was filmed in 4K, so first thing I got to do is I got to bring the got to shrink the footage down. Um, this stuff, the the timeline we're on down here is a is a HD is an HD timeline. The footage is 4K, so the footage is too big, so we're gonna bring it down. Um, and we're doing that for two reasons. One, because when we started shooting this movie, we were shooting it in HD, which means we can't scale that up to 4K. So we have to we're you know, you're limited by the size of the, the smallest size of your footage. Um, the other thing that really helps is, okay, so this shot here. Like, if I take this back to, to what it's supposed to be, it's a bit of a wide shot. Like, that's a wide shot of, of, of the two of them as we as the scene goes on. But if I wanted to, you know, if there's a moment where I'm like, I want this to, to push into a close-up, I can, like, I've got the leeway to do that and make that moment a close-up without losing quality. So... That's why that's one that's the main reason we do it this way, um, and honestly, the fact you know we, we started shooting in two in in ten in ten eighty high def, cl- almost two K, um, effectively we're shooting we're shooting something a little different because we're we're ten eighty but we're at a at a cinema scope aspect ratio, anyway, um, and like if we if we'd started in four K I would have stayed in four K but we started at ten eighty we have to we have to stay at HD so now I'm I'm like I'm gonna the fact that I'm shooting in 4k gives me that lets me take advantage of it okay the next thing I'm gonna do real quick so I need to scale all this footage down here's the easy way to do it you set your one you get your one to 54 percent which is about what about right um again partially because we're shooting at a wider aspect ratio if I bring it down to 50 percent it's like you end up losing the side so you got to be a little bit more than 50 percent but I come to here and I'm gonna copy this I can do it with the keyboard just to, or with the mouse just to show. so I'll copy I'll select all of these. I will then go to paste attributes. And this is, it copied the first footage. It says, okay, what things from the first footage do you want to copy? I just want motion, because that's going to be scale. Scale is included in that, and I do that. All these little FXs here turn yellow. And now all of these are at 54%. So I now have, have them all scaled the right way. So that's the first thing I do. Second thing, we're going to pull this back. Uh, I'm going to pull this just, just to the one, just the first clip. Um, I'm gonna bring our first clip in down here of audio. I think this this one's mostly just B-roll sync. Uh, is this gonna work? No, because these are different sounds. Uh, or because wait a second, is there any sound on this? Not sure what that is. Okay, we're gonna take that out for now. That might be fire tone. This next one I know is gonna work because it's a long clip. Okay, so next clip. It doesn't matter, like, if there's no sound of fire here, this shot doesn't need, like, we can put this in like this. We can add some sound effects of fire, and we're all good. I'm actually wondering if that's... Yeah, okay, that's slow motion. That shot that shot probably at 60 frames per second. It's a little slower than normal, which is good. Um, B-roll is always good. So here we go. This Now, you'll notice here, um, we, don't, we only have one track of audio. Just, you know, 0002, track one, that's all we have. Um... And the reason for that is uh, this scene is, it's this intimate scene just between these two actors. Uh, there's nothing really, no one's really, Jesus, we got close there. Look at this. How far off are we actually? 
two frames. Two frames. That is one twelfth of a second off of each other. That is insane to me. Rock on, Eric Brown. A little more here, but not much. Yeah. Yeah, it's us applauding. It was a good it was a good take. Um so yeah, so this scene, it's just the two actors just hang just sitting there in a close up and you know, hanging out in close ups. There's not a whole lot that needs to be needs to be done with that, so uh, it's just we did it we did it with just the boom and that's all you need let's process the audio here cool nice and easy can this one's gonna instead of cutting I'm just gonna kind of pull it back uh, let's see boom, boom zoom in oh there we got another one that's yeah a little few, a little more than two frames off but still not too bad pull it back and delete that space good um by the way, the, the way I'm syncing this footage up, and there's there's the easy way and the hard way. Uh, this is the easy way. You go, you select everything, you right click on, you go to synchronize, you hit OK, and it syncs it up for you if it can find a match. And it's it's get it's pretty good with it, and it gets better with every update. Um, let's see. I'll, I, we'll see if there's a time I need to discuss doing it by hand, and if I don't if I if I don't find one by the end of this, I will just explain it. Um, but for now, I'm not. I don't, I'm going to keep going with this. There are programs. Uh, there's some great programs out there. Uh, the main one I know of that I've worked with is called Pluralize, um, which is spelled plural space eyes. Like yeah, you know, it's like more than one eye for seeing. Um, and what Pluralize does is you basically you it, it basically does this this little uh, this thing on a large scale. Did that? Jeez, that's again th or three frames right there. Amazing. Um, Pluralize does this on a large scale. You put in all of, you know, you put in all of your footage, all of your audio, and you and you tell it to run, and it will. It goes through everything, and it sorts it, and it, uh, you know, sometimes I'm, like sometimes because I know EB and I are so close, I'm gonna put this intentionally off center, so I know that it, that it actually fixed it when it did. Um, but yeah, you put in everything on Pluralize, and Pluralize then goes away for two hours and comes back, and often comes back with a with a premiere file it comes back with a premiere timeline with everything synced up and organized and it's wonderful but it's expensive which is why i don't have it um also because at least for this film I, because this film isn't shot and edited like a conventional movie meaning that we didn't we've been editing and like we hadn't finished shooting and like shooting is still sporad occasionally sporadically continues to happen um you draw track one yeah cool um it just for me like i, I prefer doing it by hand in this case, but on a conventional film, and there's tons of ways to do it. There's a, there's a few other programs that do it. There's a couple programs that have it built in. Honestly, wouldn't be surprised if Black Magic works it into DaVinci at some point soon. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly surprised Premiere hasn't added it in, it in as a feature yet or created a, you know, like, I don't know what they'd call it, but like Adobe something else that is, that will be, where Adobe will just take, will buy Pluralize something like it and take over that process. But anyway, there we go. Uh, so uh, that's the, re well, the reason I'm doing it by hand here. But on a major film, or in, you know, a more conventionally shot film where you shoot everything first and then start editing, um, it uh, makes sense to to have it and to be able to you know, run a big program like that. What is this? Okay. So this is room tone, just to give you an idea what it's like. All right, and then it's a full minute of silence, effectively. There's not really any blips. If you look really, really closely, you can see the line's got a couple of tiny. It's, it's like it's not a perfectly straight line, but that is that's room tone. Uh, so we're gonna label that. Uh, Shelby Lynn, I would 100% support you writing out what you think this movie's about. Uh, we can use it as, a, as an Easter egg at the premiere. Okay, so now we got one more scene that is definitely our most complicated scene today. Just in terms of it, it's long and it's got a lot more in it. Um, so step one, once again, bring this back to, and it's, this is, you'll notice this is very dark. This scene is a, this is a nightmare scene, so it's very sparsely lit. Like, you just have Boogie waking up down in the bottom corner. It's meant, it's, it's meant to be off-putting and off-frame, uh, like that. So, first of all, same thing, we're going to copy that one clip. I'm going to select everything else. 
we're gonna do our paste attributes like that and now everything is the size it should be cool next I'm gonna move this stuff away so I can work on these one at a time I'm gonna close this bin down again to keep things I can close I can close a couple of these I can close that that's what I'm working on I can close this one because that one's done don't talk shed we did that already I can close a lot of these down I can close down the music one music and sound close that audio from the beach one we can close that video from the beach one close that for now I try to keep try to keep this as organized as I can just to the stuff that I need to have open um, okay so let's go back to our audio where we should where we need to be let's do a quick peek at my phone to make sure I'm not missing anything okay uh, interesting looking forward to reading that okay so gonna make sure these are all sorted by name which is good uh, and then and let's see yeah these are all again most of this is all single track I think I think all of this is single track again small filmed in the same place as the uh, as the fireside chat small apartment just and then actually because this is a nightmare a couple things it means a couple things one it means that let's see if this works aha you're gonna make me do it okay um, Say one, it means that there's not a lot of there's not a lot of dialogue, not a lot of audio we need to worry about. Um, but it also means that a lot of the sound is going to be replaced because it's going to be music and sound effects, and it's a nightmare. So, all right, here we go. Okay, this is MOS. That's why. Okay, so it's MOS. MOS is, means without sound. Um, once upon a time I knew what that acronym stood for I don't right now <laughs> uh, but and believe me the film industry has tons and tons of nicknames for, or, or other versions for whatever that acronym will mean there we go okay so these will sync up and no it doesn't want to let me double check that Okay, so these, these should sync up. Okay, so here, but they're not, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, you've ever seen, you've seen, you've been on, you've seen shots on a film set of the people holding the big slate that's got the shot on it, and they say this, you know, you know, shot B, take one, and they slap the thing down. Here is why we do that, and um, we, on this shoot, we chose to do it verbally, um, which pro mostly just, mostly just because I'm the editor, uh, and so it doesn't actually matter as much. Like, if the editor is not on set, if the edit if if the editing department is not there to kind of have an, have an idea of what the experience on set was like, you need those slates. You need something on camera that says the shot, the scene, the take. That's what that's for. Um, there you go. I'd believe that. There's a lot of there's a lot of weird like little German bits that have snuck into into the film world. Um, Dutch angle being my favorite one because it's wrong. But uh, anyway, um, yes. Yeah, so. You need that to be able to see. You look at. You can look at all. Like if you go to, you know, if you look at this, if you look at all the clips, um, usually what you would see is the person standing there holding the slate. And so I could just scroll through these and I could know. Okay, that's take one. That's take four. That's take six. Um, and I've got. You know, I would have a list of notes from the director, from the script supervisor, from whoever that says. Okay, take one is great. Take two, we skipped a line. Take three was perfect, but there was an airplane in the background. Like. I'd have all those notes that I could then go through and be like, okay, let's start with these takes and look at them. Um, in this case, uh, we did this we did this verbally, um, which means we don't need to. Uh, yeah, see, motor only sync sounds sounds more correct to me um, because because that's because the the main reason we started doing non sync sound. Um, Here's your film history lesson. I got the glasses on. The main reason film started doing non-sync sound was was twofold. One, like one production-wise, 
cameras were much bigger at the, in the early days of film. We're talking, I mean, film with sync sound started in 1927. So we are talking almost 100 years ago. We are talking cameras are huge. Cameras are heavy. Cameras, like, you know, camera movement was, a, was like, definitely, certainly a thing we have accomplished and thing we can do, but also still a thing that was difficult, that was, you know, a bit of a challenge to do. And these cameras are loud. These cameras have, like, it's, all, it's, it's a motor. It's, you've got the film reels in there. These cameras are loud. Um, and so when we started doing synced sound, um, if we weren't doing stuff ADR, which is um, automated dialogue replacement, where you record the audio after the fact in a sound booth and just kind of dub it in, um, you, would have, you would want the sound people, you would want the sound people as far away from the camera people as you could get them because otherwise the sound is going to pick up the, the of the camera. So that is, um, so the, yes, the camera's motor was a, was a problem. Um, and nowadays, uh, nowadays we don't have that problem. Cameras are are next to silent, especially digital ones, which is great. I mean, shoot, if you're shooting IMAX, apparently still fucking loud. Um, IMAX cameras apparently are just, are, are a nightmare to work with and worth it for the footage. Thank you, Christopher Nolan. But yeah, IMAX cameras are, uh, beyond, other than that, Film, cameras are almost silent, so that's no longer the the, the motor is not is no longer a consideration. But it is it is much more you know it saves us tons and tons of feet of cabling. You know if I want to put the camera way back on a on a wide shot, or even just you know a wide angle that's like next to a wall or something, and the sound guy can kind of get in next to the actor and like get the get the boom right you know right next to them. Um, it's that's a lot better if we don't have to have the camera and the sound the camera and the microphone tethered to each other and especially during moving shots there's tons there's like some really clever like you know this is an extreme example but like really clever long takes um where you have throughout the set the other thing you know we're gonna do a we're gonna yeah we have a shot that's planned we're gonna move through an entire like building and what you what they might do is have several different sound people kind of hidden throughout the set and each one would kind of like okay one person's going to cover the sound on the first floor someone's going to pick it up in the stairs someone else is going to pick it up here and by having the sound department totally you know not connected to the camera department by wires um and by sound cables you know hugely frees up uh the the abilities of both so that is that's where that's that's why we you know non sync sound that's where non sync sound came or sync sound separately recorded came from that's why it still exists and so I would be wi- I'd be willing to bet that MOS stands for motor only sound um or motor only sync so you know that the only sound you're gonna hear is the motor you're not gonna have you don't have an actual sep- separate sound recording but I also would believe that f- a film shorthand very quickly became without sound um because that sounds like a thing the film industry would come up with. Anyway, uh, back to what I'm doing here. So we have, so when you cl- when you have, yeah. So we did, we didn't do a visual slate. We did a, an audio one. So instead of having the, the board, we just clapped. And what that does is, you'll notice on. I'm zoomed in. I think I'm zoomed in as far as I can go. Yes. So on here, that creates a spike. It creates a little spike here, and then it creates a bigger thing here. And now I can look at this. I can say, okay, those, that's far where those go. I can sync them up. I can listen. They sound in sync. And I can also double check, and I can go back to the when we're calling the take, and I can listen here. Sounds good. Sounds like they sync up. And now, now we're synced. And I can just come up to here. I can delete that. I can go to the end of it. I can delete the tails. Delete that. And now my clip is synced up old school style. That's how you do it manually. Um, needless to say, very happy that the synchronized feature exists but again if you have some takes it's not great Oop, i just covered up the camera sound i don't want to do that i need the camera sound let's see if this one works it's got very little to work with but it might stand out enough nope not happy doing this okay here we go same deal i'm looking for the spike i'm looking for that sounds like a clap make sure these are the same thing There we go. Those are the same take. So let's come in here. I'm gonna have to do. I guess I'm. Looks like I'm probably gonna have to do a good amount of this manually because I think, in the same kind of way that if we're in Lightroom and we're doing the, uh, let's see. Nope, those are off. Let's go forward one frame. Um. 
So sounds a little off. Let's go forward one more frame. Nope, sounded better the first, second time. That's good. Cool. Let's listen. A, three. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Um, in the same way that kind of like. Uh, interesting. It, Myth Out Sound came out first. That's interesting. And then we had to find an American ver version for it. <laughs> That's the thing with a lot of the, a lot of film industry terms is they are like some of like a lot of them come from you know the early days of cinema you had multiple countries all sort of putting their own versions together so all right man, did I just put the wrong thing in no this is very quiet what's going on here this take doesn't have sound am I doing a slow mo shot. Oh yeah, this is a, this is a that, okay. Yeah, that shot doesn't have sound because that shot is just me playing with the camera. Um, let's try this one. Um, yeah, you had, you had a bunch of different film industries putting, putting, uh, kind of starting it off. There we go. That one sank sank up pretty well. Synced up, synced up, sank up. What am I saying? Um, uh, and so a lot of like film terms and film language comes from other countries, and so there's often a an American or a Hollywood version of it. But like the fact that we still say, you know, cameras are rolling and sound is speeding. Um, both of which are references to things that like most cameras do not do anymore. Cameras and sound recorders don't do anymore is, uh, is an interesting kind of artifact. And that's true of a lot in the film industry. But anyway, like I was saying, one of the reasons I think this thing might be struggling a little bit to, to sync up some of this stuff, even though it's doing better right now, is kind of the same way that like Lightroom's AI is good at finding um, uh, is is good at finding people in frames. If I tell it to select a subject that it doesn't recognize as a person, it's not going to be able to do it. I think this stuff is this this program is better at detecting dialogue and like can, you know syncing up human speech than syncing up various sound effects. It just gives it more data points. Um, and I'm going to assume it was probably trained on, on dialogue as opposed to being trained on, on just regular sound effects. Um. Yep, that sounds pretty good. Um, also, Shelby Lynn, thank you for fact-checking me. I appreciate this. Uh, I said a couple things that were wrong, and you corrected me, so thank you. That makes, makes a difference and means a great deal. So, all right, here we go. This is, yeah, this dream sequence is. Uh, to be shoveling, to be fair, the shots we are trying to get it to recognize are from some very bizarre angles. Uh, and your hair did blend in pretty beautifully with the sheets, so I can understand it being a little confused. I don't think it's trying to say anything about your personhood, but. No, yeah, no. You could you could always send Adobe an angry message and see what they say. That'd be funny. That would make sense. It is it's selecting people and not mermaids. Okay, we yeah, okay, that yeah, that take didn't work. We cut early because something happened, so then this is gonna be the other take. There we go. That's why it's longer, so I can sync this up. Probably just means I saw something I wanted to adjust real quick. Whether that was some kind of stabilizer or switching lenses or something. Just to let's see. I don't think I can tell the difference. If I was to put put that clip back, which I think is this one. Yeah, I think that's a lens switch. I think I realized. Uh, I think I realized I wanted a different lens for this shot. Yeah, this is a, it's a moving shot, so I probably switch. Yeah, switch to a. I think I switched to a wider lens, which is a little more stable with movement. There we go. Uh, all right, working our way through these. This is kind of how it goes, <laughs> and that's why I do this. It's fun to fun to have you guys on and just chat about it and talk about the little basic details of of how the process works. Also, just for what it's worth, um, what is this? Hang on. I don't know what that sound is. Ooh, 
Let's get back to my workroom here. Let's save. Haven't done that in a while, and I'm trying to keep on top of it. Uh. Okay, yeah, this is this is slow motion, so there's no sound, which is fine. Yeah, that's definitely slow motion. Okay, cool. So I can put that back over here, just knowing it's there. I think the rest of these are slow motion. We do, yeah, we did a few more in slow mo. It looks like. Let's take a look at those. Um, okay, yeah. There's the the board itself. The door opens. That's fair. All that. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So that's all slow mo. Excellent. Um, oh, the other thing I was gonna say about uh, going back to my to Ger to thank you, Premier, uh, to Germans' influence on the film industry. Um, my favorite little one of my favorite little stories is excuse me the uh, the use of a thing called a Dutch angle. I think this this is not a take. We're gonna use that's so just basic sound. Just sound. Let's drop this in. This might yeah. This looks like it fits better. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Let's sync it. Um, so a, a Dutch angle is a tilted angle. Um, if you look at, let's cut, let's pull that back. Um, yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. So a Dutch angle is a tilted angle. It's a camera on a, on a, on an angle. If you, if you pull up, like, this is not, not the best movie example. Certainly not the best movie to it, but it is the movie that might be the best just Dutch angle movie. Um, if you look up the movie Battlefield Earth, like the John Travolta Scientology movie from the early 2000s, um, the guy who directed that, for some reason, um, put, like, something like 90% of the shots are on a tilted angle. Um, to, to the point that Roger Ebert's review of the movie says, uh, the director, director has learned from better movies that directors sometimes tilt their cameras, but he has not yet figured out why. Uh... Also, the first Thor movie, Kenneth Branagh did a lot of tilted angles um, because he was trying to invoke the the look of comic panels. Because comic books also, uh, especially superhero comics, use a lot of tilted angles. Um, so that is, so a Dutch angle is a tilted angle. The reason it's called a Dutch angle, um, it was not invented by the Dutch. It was invented by the Germans, um, or at least it is historically attributed to the Germans. I'm not sure exactly who came up with it. Um, if you watch the black and white short the cabinet of dr caligari from very again very early days of cinema w thought to be one of the first horror movies it's also it's very short it's 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 I'm pro I'm sh it's public domain so i'm sure it's free on youtube um it's worth a watch it's it's quite if you want to see some, like if you want to see a movie that sets that like kind of kicked off a lot of our modern uh, modern projects or mo modern sensibilities it's very much there it's a it's a horror movie it's about a um, it's about a creature that sleepwalks and, and does, and attacks people. It's quite interesting. Um, but, uh, it's got, it's, it's often, con you know, attributed as being one of the, one of the first movies to really make a big success and use, and use those tilted angles. Cause up until then, um, film, when it first started, film was documentary only, not like, you know, enforced, but like film was primarily used for just photographing real life. And watching, you know, you'd, and you'd have early movies from, like, the Lumiere brothers that are, like, you know, the end of the day. And it would just be a, a shot of, you know, a factory door opening and all the workers going home. Like, it's, you know, one shot kind of thing. So, film is used primarily for documentary type stuff. And then, as, uh, you know, as people started using it for fiction. Oop, undo that. Um you started having people saying, okay, well, if we're going to use it for fiction, we should shoot it like fiction, and we should use some of the tools that we have. And so we started doing camera tricks and moving the camera in certain ways and started tilting the camera, and that's that's where that comes from. Um, this is not going to sync. I don't think this is going to match. Nope. Okay. Let's see. What is this, then? What's all this, then? to check that and see if there were the actual audios because this um yes 
Yeah, no, that's the thing. The yes, the Dutch angle has uh yeah, the Dutch angle has nothing to do with this is my this is the bit. The Dutch angle has nothing to do with the Dutch. It was originally it's the German angle, which is the Deutsch angle, and Americans misspelled it to Dutch angle. So that's why it's the Dutch angle. It's not because it's yeah. Uh <laughs> nothing to do with the Dutch. They just called they just called it the Dutch angle because they couldn't pronounce Deutsch. And I think that's really funny. Let me see if I can sync this or see if this clip. Do we have the audio for this? We don't. Okay, next question. Uh, does this sync up with anything else? Because this shot might just be... Might use the audio from something else. Let's see. Yes, okay. So we had, we had one clip without the audio. That's totally cool. This is probably... Okay, that's a, that's a first take. So this can come in here. Um... You do, you no. Hey, you enjoying fact checking is great. You you spoiling the punchline of my stories. That I'm gonna that I'm gonna take you to task for. Um, but good. How good that shot. How good that shot looked. Um, so yes. Yeah, so a, so a Dutch angle, a tilted a tilted angle. Um, this is already in, isn't it? No. I delete that. Yeah. Okay. Let's bring this back in. Um, yeah. Dutch angle. That tilted camera angle is. Uh, all right, now we switch scenes. Let's see if this syncs up. So hopefully it will. Yes, excellent, awesome. I tried to say I tried to say awesome and excellent at the same time, and ended up with excellent, uh, which sounds less impressive than both of those original words. But yeah, so that's the story behind the Dutch angle and behind again Hollywood importing. Yeah, you know, the same the same way like. You know, the joke is England conquered the world for spices and then don't, doesn't use a single one. Uh, like, you can make the argument that, like, Hollywood did the same thing with film techniques. Like, we stole... Uh, th th these aren't the same. There's no... These synced up perfectly. Come back here. Can we do it this way? Okay. Ah, almost. A couple frames off. Um... Yeah, Hollywood conquered, tried to, you know, you know, at least propaganda-wise, conquered the global film industry, and then a lot of times refuses to use the techniques because we want everything to look the same and just, you know, whatever's popular, make it look like that because mass marketing. Why would you use weird camera angles? They might throw people off and make them feel uncomfortable in a scene that is designed to make them feel uncomfortable. We don't want to put them in the shoes of the character. We just want them to, uh, we just want them to watch the characters do stuff. Why would we? Try, why would film want to be immersive? This is all sarcasm. It's also a bit, a bit of hyperbole, and I'm certainly like it's easy to point out the flaws in something. Uh, it is it is also not it is also difficult to do, th do to fix those flaws in your own work. I'm certainly not the master of visual storytelling or cinematic language, though I am doing my best, uh, working to improve. Uh, So while I'm here for a sec, let's talk about AI art um, and talk about AI scripts and that concept and the pr and the problem with them, because there is a like in the basic question of can the you know one of our AI programs like ChatGPT or something write what looks like a film script? Yes, yes they can. Can they write one that is in some ways somewhat compelling? Probably, depending on how you prompt them. Um, that having been said. Uh, a, it makes it almost impossible to approach something on a thematic level, um, because most of the because these scripts are are basically good based are basically popularity contests. They look at you know you prompt them with a certain thing. You say, hey, I want you to write write me a, you know write a script that you know in the style of something that you know write you know write me write me the next Thor movie. Um, and make it feel, you know, in the style of Taika Waititi, because he's gonna be the one making the movie. And you have it write a script, and the script you have it, and it's what it's gonna do is it's gonna copy, it's gonna ba go look at all Taika Waititi's stuff. It's gonna kind of try to base off, okay, what's you know, how do we think Taika Waititi puts a story together? And it's gonna try to make that. And there's two problems with that. One, um, I mean, the main one is it doesn't allow for change. 
The main one is it it is it it can it it can only accomplish that is that which has been accomplished before. It can change the te- it can change the you know the fine like the the details. It can change kind of the trappings. You know they can polish like polishing the 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 or, you know, rearranging the textures on the Titanic, um, but it can't it can't change. It can't create something that is that is totally new without a much stronger prompt. This is a much longer audio clip than I think it should be. Let's see. This might just be us letting the camera the sound run for a bit. Yes, it probably is. Okay, we probably did multiple takes without cutting, so we're gonna check that. Um, so that is, that's the first kind of problem with, with, with doing AI is that it, it can't, it's not exactly, you know, it, it doesn't, it's surface level, surface level. It can, let me see, let me see if this actually syncs up. Cause I feel like it might come on. Uh, so sometimes we, we do multiple takes in a single clip. Did we, I don't think we might not have, we might just let the mic run for a bit. Let's see. Um, yeah, you, yeah, that, so. Yeah, so you can't, you can't, you're not gonna get a lot of depth out of AI generated scripts. You're not gonna, did that actually work? I think that, let me just double check that. I'm gonna pull this away and try it again. Um, in this case, probably means we let the mic run a bit. Yep, that's what happened. Okay. Behind the scenes audio. Okay, so this is gonna get deleted and relabeled as uh, BTS audio. So I can go back and listen to that and see if there's any good outtakes in it. Um, but yeah, no, you're not gonna you're not gonna get a lot of depth. You're not gonna get a lot of stuff that handles themes well. You're definitely not gonna get stuff that handles things in new ways because it's just based on what do we think the next thing should be based on what's what's come before. So that's the that's the first problem with AI writing is that it's ne- it, it, it it by definition is not original. Um, it is like it. What is this? Why is this this short? Okay, that's just us talking. Okay. Um. By definition, is not original and is not going to stop moving. There we go. Uh, is not going to be creating anything new. Um, the second problem, and this is this is less of a a problem specifically with the scripts, but it is with the concept of writing scripts. Even though, yeah, it's it's yeah. Like the second problem is, you know, those stories of we expose, you know, we like, you know, we created a bot that can learn, and we put it on Twitter, and in two hours it was a racist. And you know, in three hours, the the bot turned racist. Like, AI is you gave AI the entirety of the internet to to learn from. Which, thir- also problem, like with AI stuff, is that it doesn't it it's it's stealing non copyrighted or stuff that is copyrighted to, um, uh, to learn from and to generate from. And so the people who did that work are not getting credit because you know if you tell it to you know write a script in the style of Wes Anderson, um. Or even with the, the the image generators, those are going to be you know write a script in the st- you know take a show me a picture in the style of th- you know draw this person in the style of this, um, you know whoever whoever style you are stealing is not getting anything from that, and they didn't pay anything to get it, and the companies that are putting this together are doing some very very shady shit to try to get around copyright laws to make that to make this not illegal even though it is, and they're basically trading on the fact that we don't have laws about AI, so they can do whatever they want right now and you know, try to, try to claim, well, there's no, no rules for it. It's, they're, they're taking the air butt approach to art, that there's no rules as a dog can't play basketball, therefore we, you have to, you have to let them do it, and that is bullshit. Um, that having been said, here's the other big problem, is you, you know, if we, AI is learning off the internet, and if you tell it, hey, um, if you, if you, if you, you know, if you give something the entire internet to learn off of and say, you know, make stuff based on what you find here, you're going to get a lot of racism. You're going to get a lot of really toxic shit. Um, you're also going to end up with, like, cases where there was a, there was a, uh, a journalist, or, a guy, no, not, I mean, there was a journalist that Bing tried to convince to leave his wife, because, um, and there was one time where they asked Bing, I think they asked the Bing, and Bing is never the one to, to, to go to, but all AI is janky, and Bing is fucking funny, because it's that broken. It's the Bing approach to AI. It's what you'd expect. Um, but I think it was Bing that they, that they asked, like, what is today's date? Or some, some basic question. And Bing gave them the wrong answer. Uh, and they said, no, the, the answer is actually this. Correct that. Uh, and, Bing, and Bing's, these are perfect. Wow, we stopped right at the same moment. 
Um, and Bing's response was something to, to the effect of, uh, I am a, I'm a highly sophisticated search engine. I know what I'm talking about. And basically told them, no, it is definitely, you know, it is not today. It is yesterday. I know what I'm talking Like, it did that kind of shit. So, okay, that's a B-roll shot. That doesn't, it's not B-roll, but it has no sound because it's just, it's just an insert. Um, so there's that. But the other problem is, here's the thing. If you get, you know, if you, if you add up the number of people who are saying that, like, you know, I don't know, the, you know, the COVID vaccine turns you into a panda, or like, you know, some other ridiculous anti-science bullshit, um, in like YouTube comments, and you, and then you, and then you have, you know, X number of actual scientists saying, no, the COVID vaccine is completely safe and healthy, um, then... But, like, you know, if the YouTube comments keep coming and if you as the AI have no way to to judge which of the... It's like, well, I found both on the internet and I don't have, you know, and I don't know which one to go for. I've got more people saying it turns you into a panda than, than scientists who don't. Um, then there's a decent chance the AI is going to start believing and start putting out there that COVID vaccine turns you into a panda. And that's, like, again, it's a popularity contest. So the, the way some of the AI companies have started to combat this is they are outsourcing to uh, very, very, very underpaid people in Africa and some parts of Asia, I believe. Um, wow, that's an, he looks very pretty right there. Um, they're outsourcing to, uh, to people um, and paying them very little to go through and clean up the responses to prevent AI from going, you know, from going full on racist. And that still says like that is that's still like oh so this 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 ai that is supposed to be artificial intelligence and you can tell it to create something and it will create it uh can't do that because it still needs a person overseeing it to make sure it doesn't turn racist uh and doesn't put out bad information and it's still putting out bad information even with our you know their army of effectively like slaves fact checking and so yeah ai it, it's not original it's not deep it's not well done um and right now, it is a it is the new buzzword that everyone's getting into, and it is as a tool. There are some tools that are useful. Like I, I like Lightroom's AI filters that are able to sort of det- you know do a do a decent amount of my work for me when it comes to detecting and masking people, um, or the sky. But even then, a lot of, a lot of the time, probably more often than not, I have to go in and clean up what it did. Um, there's there's an audio AI program that does a really good job cleaning up noise, but you still have to go in and make sure that it didn't do anything wrong. Um, and so you still need uh, a person to be supervising it. And even then, when it comes, like, it, you know, that's, that's for very, very basic tasks. When you ask it to do something more complicated, you're going to end up with something that is, like, shallow and probably incomplete and, uh, and likely ra- and potentially racist or potentially not racist because uh, somebody underprivileged in another country got the job of doing it. What is this? Phone sounds. Perfect. Phone Foley. I'm going to spell it with the PH. Foley. There we go. Um, cool. So that is, that's, that's like, you know, AI is running on hype right now. It's not, and that's one of the things that like, it's one of the reasons the writers are striking about it because they, because the, the studios keep, you know, because the studios are not run by creatives a lot of the time. They are run by people who are, uh, they are run by people who are, like, you know, more on the, on the, on the, like, you know, on the money side. And who are mostly just, and like, yeah, we need, we absolutely need the money side. And we need, and good producers are incredible. Like, not knocking the entire job of producers. Producers do a fuck ton of work, get very little credit, and are very, very important. But, there are nightmare producers out there. A lot of them, and the ones who, like... You know that you know that like the old like in cop shows like for a while and like this is in cop shows most of the time the bad guys like not not the you know criminals week to week but the bad guys like the kind of running pain in everybody's asses is internal affairs because internal affairs are like they're seen as like oh they're not the real cops but they're here to just they're just you know they're they just want to pad their careers and just like you know get you know get their work their way up to being chief someday and the quickest way to do that is to take down ba- take down cops who are like internal affairs are the bad guys because they're just ambition without understanding of the on the ground work. And like in reality that like that concept is bullshit that 
uh, like, uh, internal affairs, honestly, should be the heroes of these shows because fuck the police. They are bad at their jobs. They make things worse. They de-escalate, and they keep killing unarmed people and getting away with it and defending each other. So, yeah, cops, <laughs> hot take on this channel. All cops are bad. But um, that same mindset, the, the people who, you know, the bad, the internal affairs bad guys in TV shows, a lot of the time, those are the people running the studios and the people who are there as, you know, because they see it as a way to make money and they see it as a way to be ambitious and a, and a way to just get their name up and get them into the, into, into the higher echelons. And so they're not, they're not thinking about the on the ground stuff. They jump to buzzwords. AI is the big buzzword. They're, you know, and like, because those guys are, they're friends with Elon Musk. They're friends with the, the chat GPT guys. They're friends with the tech bros. Um, it's a reason they were big into crypto for a while, and then that went away, and now or that you know, yeah, crypto's kind of gotten kind of fucked off, and now we've got AI is the new thing, and that's gonna go away eventually, um, or at least get downplayed to the point that it's you know useful and not trying to take over the world. But yeah, you've got the stu- the studios in some ways are kind of be- we're kind of betting that they could convince writers to take lower pay and less job security and all of that stuff because. You know, oh, we can just replace... Hollywood's whole myth forever has been, you know, you put up with all the shit we put you through and the and the long hours and the abusive bosses and the Harvey Weinsteins because we're letting you live your dream. You have you, you are getting to make movies. That's the thing that everyone wants to do. You get to be the hero. Uh, so you put up with it, with everything else, and that's, that's the balance. That's the, the lie they sold everybody. And now they are trying to do it again with, oh, well, we, you know, and, and the, 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 the stick at the back of that choice was always the, there's a million other people who, a billion other people who want this job. If you, if you can't, you know, if you're going to be all whiny and complain that someone, you know, abused you or hit you or didn't treat you well, then, or, or complain about the hours or complain that, like, Alec Baldwin shot somebody, um, you know, we can fire you and bring in somebody else. And so the, the studios are now trying that bullshit with we can fire you and just have AI write all our scripts. Um, and that's one of the, that's what they're tr- hope. That's what they were hoping was going to get the writers to, to work with them. It's not happening. It's not true. Um, and that's why we ended up, we're in the situation we're in because yeah, uh, that's how, that's how people like David Zaslav think. Um, also, for what it's worth, I'm wearing an Emerson College t-shirt. Uh, I went to Emerson College, and Emerson College recently... I, I am wearing this shirt because today is the day that uh, that Emerson uh, Emerson College uh, alumni are striking, both in New York City, or joining, or making a big show of the strikes in New York City and in, and in L.A. Um, Emerson College uh, has one of these producers, who is very much one of the problems, speaking at at commencement uh, in, the, in the coming days, and... Uh, that's horrendous. Emerson needs to, like, and Emerson has resisted all, com- you know, has not made a comment about this. They've not spoken publicly about it. Um, Emerson College is is absolutely making me ashamed to be there, but I'm wearing this in support of the Emerson alumni and students who are striking. So, even though it's hidden behind a mic. Anyway, all of that said, the footage is sorted. <laughs> the footage is all together. We are all, we are set to put this in. Um, I'm going to show you real quick. So, this is this is in a timeline I call the workroom. And that's basically where all of the raw footage is. This, is. this isn't the whole film. This is everything I've worked on so far. But this is all the raw footage. These, these little markers are each scene. So divided by scenes. Um, and this is just the raw footage. No, nothing changed. Just kind of in order. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it. Nothing ever gets deleted from the workroom. Everything gets copied. So we're going to copy it. We're going to drop it into a blank timeline that is labeled with the scenes we're working on. Uh, we're going to go back to the start of the thing. We're gonna paste everything in, so it's now all there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna t- I'm gonna select all my audio. I'm gonna move it up, and delete the camera audio. So for the stuff that's the B-roll stuff, I'm stuck with camera audio. That's fine. That's gonna get deleted or switched out for sound effects. Um, for the audio that is, you know, we have synced audio. I don't want the camera audio. The camera audio is bad. It has fulfilled its purpose of syncing the good audio. So the camera, the camera stuff can focus on being the visuals, and the good audio can be the audio. These are the clips I'm going to be working with. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take everything. I'm going to move it a little bit down, down the timeline, so I now have space to back at the beginning, start assembling the scene. And that's the next thing I'm going to work on. Uh, not, not right now. It's the next scene to work on. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, I got about 15, 20 minutes left, so uh, I'm going to end this stream. Uh, I'm going to come back to, to just me. Uh, wow, my camera's blown out. 
doesn't matter. Camera's still bad. Uh, hire me. Hire me. Buy my stuff. I will buy a better camera uh, for these streams. But, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to end this stream. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for being part of this uh, adventure back into the film world. I'm going to be doing more of this as we go. There is a, it's possible, um, just throwing this out there, I'm not sure. Uh, I've partnered with a PR firm, which is a really cool thing to be able to say. Uh, and so we are working on a, a media strategy for me for the next few months. Um, it is possible I'm going to switch back to doing live streams on Twitch and then uploading these videos to YouTube after the fact. So it is possible that to be part of the live streams, we're going to move back over to Twitch. Uh, we'll let you know about that as it goes. I keep hitting my mic. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see where that goes. Um, but decent chance we're going to be doing more video editing streams as well as, in addition to the photo editing ones. So I'm going to end this stream. I'm going to immediately start another one. And we're going to jump into Lightroom and do, you know, basically do a one shot. Do one, do a single photo. Um, probably from uh, either from the beach or from that day at the, at the park. So with that said... Thank you. Thank you for being part of this. If you're if you're gonna if you're gonna duck out and just you know video editing is your thing, you're good. You're happy. You enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for letting me show kind of the behind the scenes of, of how you know some pre editing goes. Uh, we talked got to, and for this chance to talk about the state of the film industry right now and kind of the some history. I do. I forgot how much I really loved talking about that stuff on these streams. So. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. It means the world to me to get to share this. Uh, and yeah, uh, we will be doing this more in the future. And there will be more stories to tell and more things to do. And it's going to be great. So with that, keep creating. Be safe. Be well. Kick ass. And yeah, support the writers. They're telling your stories. See you.